Hello, 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 and welcome to WJCM Radio. I am JC, your host. Having said that, today, let's talk a little poetry. Now, this is a poem that I wrote last summer, and I'm still playing with it, actually. So I appreciate your feedback on it. The poem is entitled, Flies in a Bottle. Yeah, I know, what a title, right? Flies in a Bottle. Last summer, after I finished working in the yard, I went in the garage and got me a cold adult beverage. I sat down, I drank three quarters of my beer. Three quarters. And then I noticed that I was fighting flies for my beer. Literally. I mean, when I bring the bottle up to my mouth, they are between my mouth and the bottle. That's when they got my attention. Whoa. I set the bottle down and I gave it to him. I mean, if it means that much to you, here, here you go. I kid you not. It looked like maybe uh, five or 10 of them. They attacked that bottle. They were licking all around the top of that bottle. And then they ventured down into that bottle, clinging to the walls of that bottle. They were just licking and licking the walls of that bottle. They were enjoying themselves. And then I noticed that a couple of them starting to slow down a little bit. Their wings wasn't flapping as fast as it was when he first went in there. Now I know it's weird that me sitting here looking at this, but I mean, they got my attention. And I and I and I and I gotta admit, I, w- I wanted to see what was gonna happen. And I'm sitting here and I couldn't believe what I'm witnessing. Their wings starting to slow down and slower. And then all of a sudden, one by one, they started to fall down into the sea, into that bare sea on their backs with their legs in the air. Their wings had just stopped working. They literally drank themselves to death. They drank themselves to death. And it was at that time that I realized my eyes starting to fill with water and I could feel the water running down my face. You see, because that bottle, it reminds me of 10026. That's Harlem. That is the area code for Harlem. That bottle was 10026 back in the 60s. A dilapidated town. Riots every other day. Apartments on fire. White people moving out. Grocery stores moving out. Banks moving out. The town literally became a war zone. 
the entire town, not just a block. So when you go looking for a job and you put 10026 on your application, they know you from Harlem. And now you are sitting home wondering why you never heard from them, why they never called you. I mean, ain't too many people have a phone. You ain't got no jobs in Harlem to pay for a phone bill. So ain't too many people have a phone. That town, everybody was clinging to the walls. The streets were the walls of that bottle. The streets. They consumed you because there was nothing else to do. You were out there trying to survive, trying to find something to eat because there was no jobs in Harlem. Not a job to have. So you literally had to go looking for your food. You're taking baths in the water from the fire hydrant because this town is a war zone. People are stressing, trying to take from each other. You couldn't do, they wouldn't let you be better than them. Oh, no, 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 they, they, no. <laughs> You remember Curtis Mayfield? Pusher Man? Yeah, you remember that song, Pusher Man? Somehow or another, people supported that habit. There was King Heron. We remember the movie American Gangster? I give both of them an A. Plus. A. Plus. Because they describe 10026. American Gangster couldn't have been any more real. Now imagine kids growing up in that. We were born on the walls already. You already lost. But me? couldn't stand it. It had to be better. It had to be something better than this. So then you starting to look and you starting to figure things out. You find out what's get you to ticking. What gets you out of the bed in the morning? You know what that is. And you Hone in on that. You don't deviate from that because that's what you want to define you. That takes work. It's just not going to come to you just like that. You want to get off those walls? You got to put in the work. Put in the work. Now I can recall... One Sunday morning, I'm coming home all tore up, as we call it. Alcoholic before my 14th birthday, so I know I was drunk. So I got tired and I was sitting on that park bench. You know the one right there on 110th Street and Adam Clayton Powell Boulevard. Yeah, right there at the entrance of the park, the Central Park entrance, right there at the entrance, there's a bench sitting right there. That Sunday morning, I sat there on that bench. So tired to make it home, I just want to rest right here. See, and that's what happened with them, with them flies on that wall in that bottle. They didn't have no place to sit down. They didn't have no place to rest. And so they were just resting on the walls and you still licking and you still licking. And then all of a sudden, the old man came and sat down beside me. 
And I put my hand on my knife because in Harlem, that's a no-no. Especially if you don't know. So I put my hand on my knife and I said, oh man, I'm not the one today. You might want to step off because I'm I'm really not feeling this. He said, young man, I just want to rest. I'm so tired. I just want to catch my breath here. I mean, you no harm. And so then my mind started to wonder while I was sitting there and he was catching his breath. And I remember yesterday when I saw my boy on the corner. And I said, yo, man, you seen Johnny? Nah, man, didn't you hear? They found him this morning with his needle in his arm over there on the avenue. His wings had gotten tired and he fell. His wings got tired. And I walked another couple of blocks and I said, hey man, have you seen Mark? (laughs) Yo, Mark. So I take it you haven't heard about Mark, man. He went down there in that white neighborhood and he tried to stick up a bodega. Suicide by cop. He was tired of licking on walls. He couldn't get off the walls. He had a BB gun. He knew it. He just wanted it to stop. Wanted the pain to go away. Suicide by cop. And so I'm sitting there going, it's got to be a better way, man. I've got to get off these walls. And that old man that was sitting next to me, he started talking. I really wasn't listening. But I knew he wasn't no harm, so I just let him rattle Every now and then, every other word would catch my thought. And I listened to him. To make a long story short, when that old man got up and began to walk away from me, I had accepted the Lord Jesus Christ in my life. He made sure of that. And then I got up in disbelief of what just happened. And I started walking, and I turned around and I looked. He was gone. He was gone. Now, if you know that area, you know you can stand there on 7th Avenue and Adam Clayton Brown, 110th Street, and look all the way to 8th Avenue. You look the other way, you look all the way to Lenox. So you can see everything in both ways. You look the other way, you looking out over the park so you can see. Where did that old man go? He just disappeared. And I'm standing there trying to figure out where he went. But then I turned around, man, and I went on upstairs. As I'm lying here on my bed, a commercial came on the radio saying, you want to go to college? Come on down to 58th Street between 9th and 10th Avenue and register. No, you don't need a high school diploma. Come on down. And so I'm laying there on that bed and I'm like, <laughs> and that can't be real. Who in the world go to college without a high school diploma? That can't be real. So I know I heard that wrong. Maybe I'm still, I'm still high. But then I heard it again. And I woke up the next day, bright and early, because I wanted to go down there and see, was this really true? So I went down there to Interboro Institute. And I registered. It was true. That 
was the light that was shining down through the neck of that bottle. That was the light that was shining down on Harlem. And I had stepped into that light and it felt good. It felt good. Even though I didn't know how to read, but I didn't know that. I didn't know anything about math. I knew that. I knew nothing about fractions. I wanted to see how they're going to make this work. Make a long story short. My wings were getting stronger. Every day I went to that school. Every day I learned something. My wings were getting stronger. And I had put those streets out of my mind. You see, I had to hide from my boys in the street who was trying to hold me down. You see, they, they were my feeders. I'll say it again. They were my feeders. F-E-T-T-E-R-S. Look it up. My feeders. And I was tired of feeders. But that school gave me my first step into that light. And the more I learned, my wings were getting stronger. The more I learned, went to AA meetings and sat there and I listened to people who were just like me. The more I went in and out of rehab during that time, my wings were getting stronger. Because that school, that education, that learning how to read, that learning how to do math, you see, it was a challenge. My brain was active for once in his life. It was active. And I embraced it. I embraced it. It felt good. And then, <laughs> and then, I was up around the neck in that bottle. I could see the light in my wings were strong. And then as I'm sitting there in my garage and I'm watching this flies, and then one of them came out of the bottle and I was so happy for him. I was jumping up and down with joy. I was pumping air fisting in the air because he made it out of the bottle. He figured it out just like I did. Figured it out. And he came out of that bottle and I said, fly, young man, you deserve that. You deserve it. Enjoy your life now. I walked across that stage, shaking the hands of the chancellor of New York Institution of Technology. And he gave me three bachelor degrees. He handed me three bachelor degrees. And that was me coming on up out of that bottle, getting off those streets. <laughs> Glory be to God. Glory be to God. And there you have it. That's flies in the bottle. WJCM Radio. Until the next time, Radio family, be kind to one another. <laughs>